I do not have cool toys to show. Why am I here, you want to know? I've never sailed a submarine. I still reboot when I blue screen. Though I like to watch hot air balloons, I must admit they don't make me swoon. I've never built a super rocket. I've only angel funding in my pocket. But what I have to say is this, women are different, I mean no diss. I cannot make my toys go boom, I only run a site that's called Shazoom. Going back, as far back as prehistoric times, women played a crucial role. It is now widely believed that women may have even developed agriculture. Not so far a stretch if we believe that while men were running around all day trying to spear their mammoth, women were making sure there was a backup plan or at least a balanced meal for the cute little hominids running around the cave. In addition, women are also credited with making such useful things like baskets to gather food and clothing. You know, things like shoes for the hunters. Fast forwarding a bit to the ninth century, men discovered things like gunpowder. It took a woman, Stephanie Kwolek, in 1966 to discover an important means of defense against this gunpowder called Kevlar. Better late than never. There's always been a certain amount of give and take. While certain inventions by men were designed to get us out of the dark, other inventions were meant to keep women in the dark. While it's not surprising that men have a long-standing history of interest in penetration, women were more likely to be focused on prevention. Here you see men breaking down doors with their invention of the battering ram, while women, like Livonia Whitney, were busy working to keep out unwanted visitors with things like the door lock. Should that fail, women also invented an alternative solution, the fire escape. The history of the corset is also particularly revealing. A woman invented it, a man supposedly improved it by inventing a metallic eyelet that made it even easier to cinch. Women gave it up for men, gave up the metal in it uh, for men uh, to free up metal during World War I. And a woman, Mary Phelps, received the first patent for it, actually for the bra, uh, sold it for $1,500 to men who turned around and then made over $15 million from it. You cinch my back, I'll scratch yours. Inventions by women largely fall into a handful of categories. Categories like health and safety, food, the home, child rearing, and communications. Uh, in fact, uh, over 70% of uh, inventions over time by women since, since, they were, uh, since they were tracked by the patent office actually fall into a few categories like this. Uh, women are credited uh, these days with discovering things like, you know, language, boilers, ice cream freezers, safety flares for ships, vacuum canning, commercial ovens, AZT, noise reduction for railroads, windshield wipers, coffee filters, disposable diapers, and let us not forget Ruth Handler, who invented the Barbie doll in 1959, but redeemed herself in 1970 when she received a patent, the first patent for a breast prosthesis after her mastectomy. So women have had some pretty impressive inventions over the years. Now, there were exceptions. I wouldn't want to slight Marie Curie, even though there was nothing particularly girly about radioactivity, but there is a theme here. Today, that theme plays out in some interesting ways on the internet, ways that distinguish women from men and girls from boys. Women use email more broadly and more socially. They're more concerned about things like internet safety. Uh, they're more annoyed by spam. Uh, there's, uh, much, they're much more opposed to the display of graphic images. Uh, Cyberbullying targets more girls than boys, and girls are more concerned about privacy on social networking sites. Uh, and actually, there are more, men, uh, more women online in the U.S. today than men. I'm building a site for women that gives them what they want. It gives them the content they want and an environment they want, and it gives them the tools they want to keep out the things and the people that they don't want. Uh, we'll feature renowned experts, People like Greg Harper, you may have heard of him, to talk about things like gadgets for girls. And we'll also feel, uh, feature experts like uh, weight control expert Dr. Lou Aroni, uh, who runs the Weight Control Center at Cornell Hospital and is one of the um, great scientific uh, discoverers in the area of weight control. And here is a sample of our content. 
and a closing example of how a man with a club can actually be helpful to a woman. Oh, it's the audio trick. Dr. Roney, I've heard bran muffins were good for you. Are you kidding me? This bran muffin's like eating a piece of cake for breakfast. Dr. Roney, I grew up on canned ravioli. What, are you kidding? This can of pasta has too many calories and too much fat. Just stay away from it. <laughs> Thank you.